three, two, one. Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 636. I think I got that right. The Friday edition. I'm Kevin Coulson. I'm George Conger. Today's December 11th, 2020. Welcome to another program. This is going to be episode 636, which I've already mentioned, but I want you as a dedicated viewer and dedicated viewers of anybody who's watched more than two episodes to go to Facebook and go to YouTube and click on that little like button. That lets the algorithms know that we're a good show and that you like us and that they should help promote us. It's free advertising because George... We don't have an advertising budget. <laughs> I don't think we have a budget. And so if you guys could help that out, that'd be wonderful. Um, I also, I noticed that uh, we have 6,251 subscribers. That's up uh, 47 subscribers in 28 days. It's amazing the, the information I can get from Google here. We have more subscribers than viewers, George. If you guys who subscribe could watch every episode, that would also be great. And to take care of the Google algorithm and the YouTube algorithm, Biden won. There, now I won't be deleted. No conspiracy, no denial of the votes. Uh, Biden won. There, I'm not saying I believe it. I'm just saying Biden won. So the little algorithms who listen for the words know that they won't delete this wonderful YouTube station. George, how are you doing this week? pretty good i'm exhausted i think it's the the pre the rush towards christmas trying to we've now moved uh we've we've redoing our christmas eve christmas day schedule almost weekly now with the twists and turns and COVID. right now we've got an outdoor service and a recorded service on christmas eve and christmas day which was down from three uh three three in-person services and um on christmas eve and because people really are um, frightened yeah. by the, uh, we're not, now everything in Florida is open. There's no closures, uh, but they're, at least in our demographic, the older people who go to church, there really is concern. And I, I think it's media driven myself because we certainly haven't seen deaths or, or overcrowded hospitals here. Yeah, it's it's one of those interesting things that we, we're learning more and more about the virus all the time with COVID nineteen, and it's really taking a hit here in America, in North America especially, and in Europe right now, and now we have people showing up in the emergency rooms who were careful, who wore masks, who did all the right things, and they're telling the doctor, listen. I am as germophobic as they come. I don't know how I got COVID. And now we're just trying to figure this out. Uh, this is so contagious, George. And it just amazes me that uh, the CDC says there's so little flu right now because everybody's wearing a mask. We can't measure it. That was yesterday from the CDC. So masks do work. Yet this COVID-19 is running rapid in North America and Europe. So yeah it just it what you know we've talked about this before it's it's just one of those things that's unexplainable it's added so much anxiety over the economy over jobs over politics and over finding a vaccine for this and we have a vaccine we'll have to see how it's distributed but george if our parishioners are a little bit anxious i i give them where away over that and in our church we've temporarily ended in-person services for a little while because Connecticut is the number one, yay, we're number one hotspot in America this week. So uh, it just, you know. My, uh, I guess, I guess maybe it's just me, but there's a disconnect between my experience of life and what I'm told about life sure. from media. Um, I hear everything you say about this very deadly virus infection but i've not experienced it well, I didn't, and I, I don't see it around me i don't want to emphasize the deadly i said contagious you know and it, I, it's I, highly I, contagious fair 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 yeah that you, you're correct in, in uh and i misstated that but 
I'm not my experience of that. And, you know, my experience is working with a population group that is very, you know, susceptible to this illness is uh, maybe I don't have the trust I should in experts anymore because my experience is working with the people who should be sick is that they're not sick. Yeah. They're scared to death. Uh, so we've succeeded very well in uh, fostering panic. But whether or not this is a true manifestation of reality, I'm starting to have doubts. So maybe YouTube will cancel me, but not you, Kevin. I don't know. <laughs> no, they only cancel over the election results now. They're not canceling over COVID oh. yet. So you won't be censored over that yet. No, and I understand the, the, the doubt of it all because you know we're dealing with statistics we're dealing with uh the media who likes to i hate to use the word trump up everything and you don't know what's real anymore and you and i've had dealt with this for the, at least the last eight years this generation of fake news the sensation and sensationalism that sells newspapers that sells time that sells uh the ads on the air you have to what do i what do i have to put in this headline to draw people to my website versus somebody else's website and we've seen this just built up more and more over time and here's the problem george sensationalism works it does draw people you get the right headline in there and you have everybody reading your story and up goes your revenue from ads and that's how media is completely driven now is by ad revenue uh and by analysis and not uh two sides of the story it's it's a sad fact but but there again if i were an, an advertising buyer i really would question uh these claims made by google and facebook about their out their reach and whatnot i just don't i don't believe it anymore uh the the claims that the internet advertising has done and made um no it we, we just don't seem real to me it, and you're right because we went through the period of clickbait we went for the period i remember when i first started anglican tv and we got to youtube and we're posting our videos on youtube and youtube was telling me i was having twenty-five thousand viewers for the stuff i was putting up and i'm like wow this is amazing i am really cool and then about a year and a half later they said oh we corrected our algorithms and uh, there was some mistake somewhere, somewhere in one of our contractors. And now we're putting up the real numbers. And so my 25,000 was actually 3,000, which is good. I'm glad I got 3,000. But, you know, for a long time there, I thought I was the cat's meow of Anglicanism. And uh, finds out I'm just the mouse. <laughs> so <laughs> just like, you know, and you're right. It, it, there's so much fakeness going on and so much things we can't trust. We learned that with climate. We've certainly learned that now with technology and the news. George, we should talk about some Anglican news as long as we've got the program up. Well, let's talk. Let's take this fake news angle. Uh, we had a viewer write to us expressing concern about a upcoming synod of an Acne diocese, Rocky Mountain sure. diocese. And his concern was uh, ever since the George Floyd case uh, back in Minneapolis, uh, earlier this year, which prompted all the Black Lives Matter riots, the latest incarnation of them, this diocese has been on a critical race theory uh, drive. And their forthcoming diocesan convention has all these workshops on racism and critical race theory. And again, this is a manifestation, I think, fake news. Mm -hmm. um, I think my personal life experiences are, and I'm a man in his 50s, is that America is least, I don't know any white supremacists. And I live in a part of the country where you see guys driving around in pickup trucks with Confederate battle flags flying. I don't think that this massive wave of white supremacists, of racists, of Ku Klux Klan members that the media tells us about is real. I think actually race relations, I think the past four years have been bad, not because of Donald Trump and company, but because of the fake news telling us it's bad. Uh, I, in my vestry, if I look at the Episcopal Church that I grew up in in the 60s and 70s and what I have today, uh, 
my uh, a quarter of my vestry is of African American descent. My junior warden is a Cuban immigrant. Um, it's we're not all doctors, lawyers, and bankers. And I have a, a rural congregation in the South. The, but where I'm going with this is that I think this critical race theory, this looking at the world through the lens of, of race, I think that's anti-Christian. I frankly think it's a manifestation of evil, of dividing people. Uh, this is what the South Africans did uh, with the apartheid of dividing people between uh, hewers of wood and drawers of water and the elect. Uh, you know, God help us if the act, Afna, ACNA has gone down this road of critical race theory. Um, you know, at what point are they indistinguishable from the Episcopal Church in their lunacy if this is one of the things they're pushing? It's interesting. I, I, one of my heroes in, in teaching is uh, uh, Vody Balcom. And he used to always get up and, and part of his race teaching was, I've never met a black pastor who stays up late at night worrying about whether or not he's reaching the white people in his town. Or how do you get more white people into my church? And he's like, there is a natural tendency of people to hang around uh, what is they're familiar with. It's just, it's a natural tendency. It, it even exists in software, but we'll talk about that some mm -hmm. other time. And his point being is there is this desire to put on a white guilt. Now, George, you and I are white, and we're going to uh, obviously repel from white guilt, but we repel because it's not true. It is this fakeness. When you get to critical race theory, it's kind of the upper echelon. It's the, the guru level of virtual signaling you know you get climate change you get this you get you know peace green peace and all that at the very top critical race theory is the guru level of virtual signaling and it does that because it breaks down majority it breaks down what we understand as the nuclear family we've already seen the last 20 years taking out the nuclear family here in america and, and europe uh it's now scoffed upon to have uh, a husband and a wife and two children. It's now scoffed upon uh, to uh, bring your kids up to believe that uh, marriage is between one man and one woman. Uh, culture has really come against us for the family. Now they're coming against us for the color of our skin, which is inherently racism. Well, uh, this is a form of uh, panthe pantheism. It's the same. It's the same philosoph philosophy that motivated Nazi ideology, of that Mother Nature knows best. Um, I've been reading a book on the religion of Adolf Hitler, and one of the things that it makes the point about Hitler was that he wasn't an atheist. He was definitely not a Christian. He was a pantheist. He believed his God was the God of nature. And part of his understanding is God, you know, nature made the races. And he used the Darwinian worldview, which is some races are better than others. And this critical race theory, in a twisted way, takes this same worldview that Hitler had. Now, Hitler wanted to destroy the weaker races in his mind. Critical race theory wants to demonize one race uh, against another or one class against another. No, um, no, not class, just it's race. Just, Hold on. You said class. Okay. Not class, just race. Okay, because yeah. the, You're right. the natural world is of majority rule. If you go to China, the Asian population, which is the majority, rules. You go to any mm -hmm. African nation, Nigeria, Uganda, you, you name uh, them over there, except for South Africa, which had its difficulties. The majority rule is by the, uh, the the majority color skin, black. If you come here to Canada, majority rule. Norway, majority rule. Okay, it, it, it has little to do with the skin color. It has much to do with majority. So I guess what you mentioned the white guilt. I guess I must be strange because I don't have any white guilt. Um, Maybe there's something defective in me. I'm sure our viewers will point those things out. But but the but this the mistake of worshiping at the altar of social justice, the mistake of 
subordinating the gospel of Jesus Christ for uh, fashionable pantheistic uh, philosophies like critical race theory will be the death of the ACNA, just as it's been the death of the Episcopal Church. Well, many things have been the death of the Episcopal Church, but one of them is critical race theory indeed. Um, well, what is, I think behind that is a pantheon, yeah. a, a pantheonism of uh, seeing nature as God not Jesus Christ is God. Now, to be fair, I've seen a lot of conservative, orthodox, religious um, entities in the last year look into critical race theory as a reaction to what's going on. They're watching the riots in the street, and they, they entertain for a moment, maybe I'm wrong on this, maybe I am guilty, and they look into it. And I've seen one after another after another say, okay, this is, this is hokey, there's nothing here, this is racism, at its purest form is critical race theory, and so they, they back away. I don't know if maybe this diocese is just still looking at it and hasn't backed away yet, but please know critical race theory is heresy. Woke is heresy. You can't get you can get more heretical, but it's right in the top ten. All right, George, I think we covered that topic to death. <laughs> what else we got to cover today? Well, uh We've got some really disturbing news out of China. Chinese government in one province has shut down, has bulldozed 99 churches uh, over the past few months. Uh, Bitter Winter, which is a magazine that recounts uh, persecution of Christians in China, reports. And these are not underground house churches. These are official churches registered with the state, members of the state-sponsored uh, China Christian Council, Three Self Patriotic Movement. These are 99 the churches shut down. Have already agreed to put up the picture of the leader instead of Jesus. They've already agreed to everything that the Chinese has said to do. You know, they, they made all the agreements and now they're still shut down and closed down. And the magazine goes on to report that there's each, you know, they're all different reasons. Oh, well, for COVID reasons. Oh, well, you're too close to a school. Oh, well, uh, for health code violations. Even though these are all registered, certified churches that are there with government planning, and that the argument is, well, the government give you gave you permission, the government can take away permission, and then they go on to bulldoze and destroy the buildings to eradicate any place of Christian worship or repurpose the structure for other places. The uh, uh, coupled with the demo, demo, the, the, the crackdown in China, uh, in Hong Kong, Jimmy Lai uh, of a very wealthy, influential publisher of magazines and businessman has been arrested on sedition charges, and he's going to disappear into the gulag in China. Uh, Hong Kong, you know, is effectively over as Hong Kong. It's uh, now just going to be another city in China. And for the Christian churches, the Anglican and the Catholic and the free churches, they've got a very tough time here because... On the one hand, they have to speak against injustice and evil, but on the other, they have to survive as an institution. And so they're treading a very fine line because you know, the Anglican Church in Hong Kong has all these properties going back to colonial days that can be taken from them in a moment and their schools taken away and their leaders arrested and the church destroyed as the church in China, mainland China was destroyed after uh, the 1949. So they've got to walk a line, their leaders are saying, between outright giving in and outright defiance. And, well, it's easy for me to say which course they should take, because I'm not there. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a really difficult time in China for Christians. It is. It's amazing the power that China has become uh, over at least the last 67 years. Um, you know, this is a country 130, 140 years ago wiped out by Japan. Japan went in there with their little samurais and just, you know, slaughtered parts of China. Now China is a true global power, so much so that they convinced Canada to do joint war exercises. So much so that it's easy to pay off people like Hunter Biden and bring them up into uh, the political class and uh, brag about having people at the top echelon uh, in America. Uh, 
for 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 the Facebook computers, allegedly. Allegedly. Allegedly oh, bribing. Oh, don't don't censor us, please. <laughs> yes, allegedly, allegedly bribing <laughs> members of Congress. <laughs> allegedly suborning former vice presidents. All alleged. Yeah, allegedly. So um, you know, yeah, Kevin, I don't think people knew what you were talking about with the the, the war games business. Yeah. Um, yeah, yesterday Justin the, Trudeau said, "Come on in, we'll have some joint war games." Yeah, they yeah they have the People's Liberation Army ec- doing joint exercises with Canada, uh, military exercises in Canada. Uh, I, I, for some reason, I don't think that's going to happen because I think somebody's going to make sure it doesn't. No matter, you know. Donald Trump so. still has. Um, I can't tell you the uh, number of NATO radar stations on the land and territory of Canada that we do not want China to have any uh, knowledge of. So, uh, yeah, I, I would say they need to put a stop to this. Well, the uh, but there is some good news in the religious persecution side. The Eleventh Circuit Court of Appeals, which covers the West, I'm sorry, the Ninth okay. Circuit Court of Appeals, which covers the West Coast ruled that California's shutdowns uh, were unconstitutional. A Pentecostal church uh, raised the argument that uh, we're having the same basically sort of gathering that you would have at a Walmart, at a restaurant, at a casino, and yet they're allowed open, we have to be closed. And the government found that there was unequal treatment of religion with secular businesses. So. The, the rule is now that if the government shuts everybody down, churches have, can be shut down. If the yeah. government shuts down only those people who are not politically favored, which is what California has been doing, uh, I think many of us have seen on TV the, uh, the movie industry has been allowed to continue. And so they have outdoor commissaries for their staff and have outdoor dining. And there's this woman who has a restaurant across the street from the studio and she's not allowed to have outdoor dining and she's going out of business while the studio commissary just across the street is having outdoor dining because they're buddies with the governor and she's not. Uh, the California's court, Supreme Court, I'm sorry, the 11th Circuit Court, 9th Circuit Court of Appeals, <laughs> it's Friday, it's a long week, <laughs> has said you have to have equal, treat, equal treatment. So it's gotta be pain and misery for everybody or nobody. Well, I think California is pretty much over. Elon Musk has moved to Texas. He's moving uh, Tesla to Texas. One of the stalwarts, the first people to Silicon Valley was Hewlett Packard. Hewlett Packard said, we're done. We're moving to Texas. San Francisco, the place where all of these uh, big executives live and have their mansions, ruled this week that we're going to have a wealth tax on everybody who makes more than a million dollars because we don't think they should. Boom, San Francisco's done, California's done. I would recommend Texas, uh, Florida's nice, George. You like Florida, but we don't want to raise up the prices here too much. It's crazy. Well, it, Los Angeles uh, has a new district attorney who announced yesterday that they will not prosecute prostitution crimes. They will not prosecute uh, most misdemeanors. You can drive with a suspended driver's license and not be arrested or prosecuted. The lifestyle... The, in the New York City under Rudy Giuliani, uh, turned the corner from bad old days of New York in the seventies. Uh, remember the movie uh, uh, French Connection? Was it Death Wish? Uh, the, Char- <laughs> well, the Charles Bron- the Charles Bronson movie. Yes, where he shoots, where he becomes vigilante. Mm-hmm. The Death New Wish. York of those days was turned around by Rudy Giuliani and his police commissioner because they instituted the, no, the broken windows. They got rid of the squeegee men off the street. They, all the nuisance crimes were policed. You couldn't jump the turnstile at the subway. And when you crack down on that, it had a knock-on effect that it basically removed uh, the major crimes. Well, Los Angeles is a, do, starting an experiment of decriminalizing all the minor crimes uh, from out, narcotics yeah. shoplifting prostitution mm-hmm. uh so that and we'll see what happens to los angeles and i don't think it's going to be good it won't be good uh, oh well all right so that's that's our political time <laughs> do we got any more anglican news we can do <laughs> yes there's lots of anglican stuff uh wales the bishops of the church in wales 
uh, released a uh, memorandum on same-sex marriage, they were asked by the, Assem the Welsh Assembly, um, to the, the Welsh Synod, to come up with a plan on gay marriage, a same-sex blessing. Now, Wales already has a partnered gay bishop, Cherry Van, the Bishop of Monmouth. Uh, she is a, an out lesbian. Now, they don't trumpet it the way Gene Robinson and company were trumpeted, but she is what she is, and everybody knows, and uh, so on and so forth. We were, I, we were one of the first, I think we were the first That's outlet first, to report sure. Anglican yeah. Inc. And the official response from the church in Wales, is, well, we're just not going to talk about that. Uh, well, now, in fairness, that's the way the Church of England and churches in Europe have done it for, for many a millennia. You know, we know he's, we're not going to talk about it. Here in America, we had to, in the Episcopal Church, trumpet it, as you say, make it our doctrine, make it our future, and bet everything into it. Yeah, we, we rolled the dice and we, we laid all our uh, money on the table just for uh, same-sex marriage and the, the bishop. Well, the Wales, Wales has gone down the same course of starting with the bishop, starting with the desire, starting with the bishop, and then moving to same-sex marriage and then moving to change the prayer books. The same trajectory we started with the United States beginning with Gene Robinson. In this case, one of the Welsh bishop's memo is basically making the argument that the Apostle Paul, when he talked about pornea, really didn't understand modern homosexuality and modern same-sex attraction. That the Bible was written at a certain time and a certain place for a certain culture and a certain people, and things change. So, in essence, the Bible is not eternal, it is not truthful, it is not uh, uh, inerrant in its moral and doctrinal teachings. It can be adjusted as time goes by is the Welsh argument, which is the Episcopal Church's argument. Uh, an evangelical and a traditional Anglican or Anglo-Catholic would say that's nonsense. Uh, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He doesn't change his, his views on what the uh, popular uh, views are. But Wales has gone down that road, and I hate to say that it's a done deal, but it's a done deal. When you already have a partner, a bishop, um, and the difference between Wales and England is that in England, they say, oh, well, they're chaste. Uh, they may be in a civil partnership, but uh, they don't do anything because the regulations say they can't. In Wales, they don't bother with that. It, they are what they are. And now we're seeing Australia fall apart. And the difference is in Australia, uh, Bishop of, the retired Bishop of Wangaratta, after the... Uh, uh, Appellate Tribunal of the Church of Australia ruled that there's no doctrinal problem with same-sex blessings. Um, and then the primate said, well, let's stop. Let's wait. Let's hold off until we basically, as a church, move together in unity on this. The retired Bishop of Wangaraga, Wangaratta, Wangaratta, whatever, yeah. said, screw you. <laughs> and he did a <laughs> blessing of clergy. And so Sydney has, GAFCON Australia has response saying, okay, if you're in a diocese with a kook of a bishop, we'll give you alternative Episcopal oversight. And Sydney is written in a powerful repudiation of these actions by the bishop um, in Wangaratta. But at the end of the day, it's, it's there's a novel uh, called Things Fall Apart by a Nigerian Anglican author. Um, and things are falling apart. No. And yeah, as Anglicans, it's it's hard to watch this, but uh, I would hope that this is a time where the, the church really discovers itself. Uh, certainly, GAFCON has done some amazing things, and we're going to have an interview with the new church Anglican future people that started a, I don't know if it's a province, I would say, in Europe. Um, Call it the, the title Anglican Network. Yeah, in Network. Europe. Okay. Now, one of the difficult things for our viewers is that you know, there's, a, there's a certain strand in some religious groups, denominations, to, to enjoy watching Anglican news because of schadenfreude, of, watch, of taking great pleasure in the troubles of others. Yeah. 
Um, some members of the ACNA look at the Episcopal Church and they love Episcopal Church news because it's so awful, but it's happening over there. Well, one of the things we've seen with Pope Francis, for example, and in the Orthodox world, is that there are no safe havens. People would jump ship from the Episcopal Church to the Roman Catholic Church 25, 30 years ago, saying the Catholic Church will never change. It'll stand for what has been eternal and true and always what the Episcopal Church will blow with the winds. Uh, and they, and now they we have would say pope. this after Vatican II. Yeah. Now we have a pope who is pushing women in the diaconate. And once you accept women in the diaconate, you know, that was the first line that was breached. And then after that, there's no more. The defenses are broken. Uh, where the Germans are, the German Episcopal Conference, German and Austrian Episcopal Conferences are working on blessing of same-sex unions. Um, we've been there. We've done that. And we see that still happening in the Catholic world. And Francis does what Francis does on all sorts of things from basically going all in on a Biden administration approach to politics and the environment and this and that and abortion. Uh, it tells you we're in a world where the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops and Planned Parenthood have the same statement about Joe Biden. Uh, and Joe Biden is a supporter of abortion up until the moment of birth and a little bit longer, little if, bit it, longer. if nobody's looking. Longer, yeah. um, so the old days of there being, well, we can always go here. Um if the ACNA thinks that more Episcopalians are going to jump ship because they're a safe harbor, well, when you have these stories about critical race theory uh, in the ACNA, that really shuts the door uh, to more people coming over, unless they're the Bishop Love types who are kicked out <laughs> and they need a temporary safe harbor. Uh, but, uh, well, these this is my view. It's well, not fact, well. it's opinion. Well, and that's why people watch this show is to get our opinion on these types of things, George. Do you need to take that call? No, I'm sure. It, <laughs> it's in my coat, which is over there. Oh, it's right here. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, it is telling me that I have my car warranty is about to expire. I'm positive. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry for that. No, no, that's all right. It, it's part of the nature of this program is anything that can happen will happen. Yeah, I, we should tell them. My great idea was to do the Friday show without a pre-show. And we got three minutes in and it was so horrible. Even George said, Kevin, this is horrible. We need a pre-show. So we stopped and we taped and you're watching the, 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 the show with a pre-show. Um, so anything that can happen will happen as long as we do it right. George, and you're right. And I'm going to talk to the people about with the Anglican Futures about the new province or network they're going to form in Europe and talk about how they're going to work with existing entities, uh, Anglican entities in Europe. That'll be kind of uh, a good conversation. I see GAFCON doing a lot. They had the primates meeting. They addressed Australia and they uh, addressed uh, the needs of England and the desire to, to have a network in Europe. GAFCON and ACNA are still on the right trajectory. You and I fear when we see something like critical race theory show up in a, in a diocese, but I've seen time after time after time the ACNA correct what is wrong or let a bishop go who is errant. And I, I, I believe that they still, uh, as an entity, do wonderful at self-correction. And I had to say, nope, that's Yes, that's, work. that's a fair statement. Yeah, so. That's a fair statement. I'm not going to wait up at night going, oh, critical race theory in a diocese and act. Yeah, I don't think so. You know, I think the right people at the right time uh, correct these things. And the ACNA is probably the greatest representation of all three streams from the uber uh, charismatic, evangelical, and uber uh, Anglo Catholic. And they all seem well, to work together. I, I I'll, I'll I'll spout a moment of heresy. I can't stand the three schemes nonsense. Um, you and I agree. It, it's uh, it's uh, you know it, well another show, another topic. <laughs> that would be a five-hour show. <laughs> well, let's start with Hooker and the three stool. 
legged stool. Okay. Uh, George, let's get some other uh, news going here. Um, or did we cover everything already? Well, we touched on Wales and Australia. We I mentioned India to you, but you didn't seem to be very excited about that. Well, we, ever, we all it was was a conclusion to the story we talked about. Why don't you talk about it real quick? Well, the Diocese of Chota Nagpur and its Bishop Basil Basky. I love that name, Basil Basky. Uh, <laughs> withdrew from the Church of North India. And the, there were mutual accusations of corruption leveled against Bishop Basil and by Bishop Basil against the National Church. Well, they've managed to settle things, and the Diocese of Chota Nagpur is now back in the Diocese, in the Church of North India. And if looking at public statements, it really looks to me like the uh, thieves managed on a how to divide the loot. Uh, that was a financial both sides were agreement, accusing, yes. <laughs> both sides were accusing each other of corruption. And I don't I have no personal knowledge of corruption on either side, but the history of corruption among the upper echelons of the Indian churches is for all the world to see. Um, at one time, I think majority of one time about four or five years ago, majority of the bishops of the Church of South India were under active criminal investigation for theft and fraud, stealing from the diocese. Um, Thomas Uman, the former O O M M A N, wonderful name, the former moderator of the Church of South India, uh, he well, when he he just retired as bishop of uh, Central Kerala or South Kerala. When he was made moderator, there was a lot of excitement because he was one of the few bishops that had a clean reputation. Uh, a lot of the other bishops are dirty and everybody knows that they're dirty. Now, what does dirty mean? Well, they accept kickbacks. They uh, sell the, the, the business, the diocese, diocese and finances are an extension of their own personal piggy bank for they and their, and their clan or tribe. Bishop Uman, had a reputation of being squeaky clean. And he went in and there's a lot of talk about he was gonna clean up the Church of South India. And one of the things he discovered was that as primate, he did not have the power to discipline errant bishops, to, to make sure that people didn't steal. His, the structures of the Church of South India vested such authority in the local bishops with only, uh, a mod moderate oversight from a central authority. But if the central bureaucracy is corrupt and the bishops are corrupt and they're presiding and the primate wants to clean things up, it's not going to work. And it didn't. And so Bishop Uman basically decided to put his energies into the environment, which is a big issue in India because they have a lot of deforestation. Yeah. It's not a kook issue as it is in the United States. It's a real issue. But yes. it's, a, it's a real issue. And Here's one I like. He was really big into temperance. Do you know what that is? What is your definition of temperance? Temperance is he was against alcohol. No, no. If if you were not a teetotaler, you could not be a priest in his diocese. Hmm. Which uh, in some Episcopal churches would mean there diocese mean there were no <laughs> priests. <laughs> if you wanted to run for diocesan office, you had to be uh, dry. And he was quite strong on driving alcohol out of the life of his diocese. And he was involved in national campaigns to uh, revoke liquor licenses and things of this nature. And so he still sought to accomplish a lot, but the goal of cleaning up the Church of South India and freeing it from corruption is going to have to fall to another person. Hmm. All right, we have come up on 39 minutes, or is that 30? Oh, gosh, George, my progressive lenses, I can't see a thing. 39 minutes. Holy cow. That's a long episode for Friday. I, we, George and I want to thank you for going all the way through all the episode for 39 minutes. That is amazing. We had a lot to talk about. Uh, it's a free-for-all Friday, and that's where George and I just sit there and talk and talk and talk and talk, and you listen. Li all right, already, Kevin. I'm Kevin Carlson. And I'm George Conger, and you've been watching episode 636 of Anglican Unscripted.